my next question is that um, you are um, a lecturer both in our bachelor program international management and also in our MBA program international business now you showed a, a, um, the front page let me show it as well um, so I'm sure that you're able to to integrate some of those findings um, in the course are you yes because well first of all this MBA course is is extraordinary uh, not just for students who are usually very happy to participate, but for a lecturer like me, because it's very international. You've got every year a lot of people coming from all the four corners of the world. So um, this is really a, a strong symbolic of what business is about today. So, so usually the lecture of cross-cultural management that we have in the MBA course uh, happens after uh, several weeks uh, in the program so that students a bit already got to know each other and so um, during this uh, these sessions we are able to uh, basically present not only culture and the challenges and, and everything I just discussed now but also use the uh, personal experience of the students uh, who are usually uh, mature experienced people with international background uh, but who some of them just arrived in Germany, others just came back from abroad and so on. And so it enables us to, 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 to dwell on their uh, real experience. And so you've got those, you know, those fantastic moments of, uh, of an MBA student who, who's listening to a concept and they're like, oh yes, now I understand what happened. So that's really it. Huh? Uh, and, and of course, uh, there is still a significant difference between the course that I'm teaching at bachelor level, which is well, not, not cross-cultural 101, but let's say much more uh, um, uh, centered on communication, on how to work in groups, and the MBA course, which is a, a full upgrade, where, where, where it's a business course. Huh? And, uh, and in this field, precisely, often there is a bit of a mix between cross-cultural communication, cross-cultural management. Cross-cultural communication is um, it's more like an extension of, uh, of communication courses, linguistics, sometimes uh, psychology. So it's more like how to get along with people that are different. What I'm teaching at the MBA, it's really a management course. It's aimed at uh, people with a management background. Myself, I've got a management background, even if I speak several languages. Uh, and so, so of course, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a giving more practical answers to uh, leadership, uh, teamwork, and this kind of, uh, of topics. Yeah, excellent. So, and it is indeed a core course of our program because uh, we have a program of international business and knowledge about cultural topics, intercultural, cross-cultural topics, of course, are very important. Now, I would like to quote you, Jerome, because you have a very interesting statement uh, in the description of your course in our module handbook. What you say there is, um, actually, the world is not globalized. Not yet. In fact, we're only experiencing the beginning of it, which is a very interesting statement. Do you think that the COVID-19 pandemic um, is influencing globalization or is it just maybe, um, yeah, or is it putting it in on a hold or just slowing it down or in the long run, it will have no effect? Um. Well, I don't want to enter into a very long discussion, uh, but roughly I would say, well, first to answer the question why, why I say the um, uh, globalization is just starting, because if, um, if we were living in a globalized world, which often we read in the first uh, lines of uh, students' papers, you know, we live in a global, and it always makes me jump and say, well, if we were living in a globalized world, we would not be talking about any kind of cultural adaptation needs. It would be just natural, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, when you live in a democracy, you don't constantly talk about the fact that uh, there is a need for democracy. It's just like it is, mm -hmm. you know. Now, so I believe that precisely if, if we look at a curve of, uh, you know, uh, some sort of exponential curve based on international exchange, be it international business, but it can be the movement of people and so on. We see that we are just at the beginning a bit of the hockey stick. Uh, and that's why 
it's creating some uh, difficulties. Uh, you know, we, we see it when you've got a, a multicultural uh, a group of people, when you are all very homogeneous, imagine a company, when it's like 100% your national culture members, when you got one uh, alien, whoever it is, can be somebody from a different uh, region or whatever, uh, usually it's kind of a bit like a curiosity and usually people are well welcome. If you got a bit more uh, quickly, if especially for instance, those people they speak a different language, you've got a vast majority who start a little bit feeling threatened. You're like, what those people are saying? Do they talk about us and so on? And that's a bit where we are. We're, we're actually, we're just opening up. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's growing, but we are not yet in a situation, some companies are, and don't get me wrong, where, where, where culture is, is, is beyond discussion anymore. So, so, so that's why I believe that it's, it's just the beginning. When you listen to, for instance, some fun stuff like, uh, like music, uh, we, we all think we live in a world where, where we all listen to the same music worldwide. And it's true that you've got especially um, Anglo-Saxon, American uh, singers that have worldwide audience. But first of all, you start having some uh, non-Anglo-Saxon, uh, um, uh, I would say, artists that are also worldwide audience. Uh, think about uh, uh, K-pop uh, coming from, uh, from Korea. Think about guys like Daft Punk who are French, but everybody listens to them. Uh, but also when you look at the the statistics about the, 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 the artists who sell most uh, disc per country, you take the top five and most of the time the top five you've got local artists. Mm -hmm. so, so it shows that yes, we do have the feeling of an intercultural worldwide and so on. In reality, it's much less. Mm -hmm. Now with the COVID, I think the COVID is going to become a, a, an extraordinary case study because it shows that simultaneously globalization is responsible for the quick spread of the virus, let's face it, and globalization is essentially the acceleration of everything, acceleration of contact, communication, and so on, and, and traveling. So, of course, there have been lots of viruses ever since human exist, huh? uh, but now it took a matter of weeks, months to cover the world because people travel. But simultaneously, if you look at how quickly we got data from countries. It's also extraordinary. I mean, everyone now is with the telephones and checking per country how many people are in hospital. This is also globalization. And of course, the, um, the, the race to, uh, to, to, to fight it uh, in a hospital, finding a vaccine and so on. And this is also thanks to globalization where we're able to immediately compare some research findings uh, in one country and so on. So for me, it's just, um, it's just an illustration of it. I don't believe it's going to change fundamentally things, maybe in teaching, because we're realizing that actually uh, virtual classes uh, work well. <laughs> work well. It's not the same as, but it has some advantages and, and disadvantages. So one area where I believe the uh, current crisis might have an impact long lasting might be the format of teaching over time. I believe mm -hmm. they will be more integrated, which let's face it, is not something that started with the pandemic. I mean, we were already doing it before occasionally, but now probably it will be easier to set up. Yeah, I agree with you. Great, Jerome, thank you very much for our chat. Uh, good luck with your research. I hope that uh, many more people will enter their data to give you a solid database um, for analysis. And also, I'm looking forward to welcoming you um, again in our MBA program um, in the coming winter semester. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to have this discussion. I'm looking forward to uh, teaching again this group uh, next, uh, next semester. And, uh, and I will bring the students the latest uh, research so that we will make some, uh, some uh, case studies based on that, of course. Excellent. Bye-bye, Jerome. Goodbye.